In this video, you'll learn how to create unbound columns in both XAML as well as at runtime. We'll also take a look at how to create and customize total and group summaries, and finally, the data filtering options that are available to end users. I'll start with a Silverlight application project. Here I have a grid that is already bound to a sample data source. I switch to the XAML editor, and you can see that the columns are specified manually. This is required if I need to create an unbound column. So let's go ahead and add a new column and call it total. As this will not be bound to any field in the data source, I'll set its unbound type property to decimal. Next, I'll specify an unbound expression for the column. So let's display the product of the unit price and quantity columns. Finally, to be able to invoke the built-in expression editor at runtime, I'll set the allow unbound expression editor property to true. Now let's go ahead and run this to see the result. You can see the additional unbound column and the values that are calculated based on our specified expression. To change the expression at runtime, I can invoke the expression editor by right-clicking the unbound columns header. I'll modify the expression, and upon clicking OK, the column values are instantly updated. I can always go back and revert back to the original expression. Now let's return to Visual Studio and see how to implement total summaries. I'll start by creating a total summary collection inside the grid control. Here, I can add individual grid summary items. Let's start by creating one for the unit price column and setting the summary type to average. I'll add two more summary items and set the types to sum and count. Finally, I need to enable total summaries within the table view. To do this, I'll set the show total summary attribute of the table view to true. And now let's run the application. Here you can see all three total summary items that were specified in XAML. Since the unit price column had two, they are stacked on top of each other. I can right click the area beneath another column and add multiple total summaries at runtime. Or I can remove existing ones. I can further customize this by including the total summary of another column within the unit price column. Let's move on and see how to implement group summaries in the grid. I'll follow somewhat identical steps and first create a group summary collection. I'll populate this with group summary items. Let's add the first one for the unit price column and set the summary type to max. I add a second summary for that column. And finally, another one for the total column. I'll go up to the list of columns and set the group index property on the country column so everything is automatically grouped by country. I run the application, and you can see the specified summary values displayed within the individual group headers. I can customize these in the same way as the total summary values. Using the built-in summary editor, I can also change the order in which the group summaries are displayed on the group header. I return to Visual Studio so we can take a quick look at the data filtering features available in the grid control. I'll enable the Show Auto Filter Row property on the table view and run the application again. You can see the filter row is not displayed at the top of the rows. So as I start typing in a specific column, only the records containing the text are displayed. I can also use wildcards to search for columns containing specific characters or text. The filter row can also be used with numeric values. Another way to filter data is through the column drop-down filter menu. I can select to only display records that are in the UK. Once the filter is applied, you'll see it displayed in the filter row at the bottom of the grid. I can further modify it there or create more complex filter criteria using the built-in filter editor. So let's say we only want to display records that have a unit price value between 10 and 30. I apply the filter and you can see the data is displayed accordingly. Let's lower the upper bound. Also note that I can go ahead and specify multiple filter criteria. For this demo, however, we'll just use one.
Apply the filter, and based on the new criteria, you can see that only a single record is being displayed. Thanks for watching, and of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress.